the season beloved of poets and writers. It may have been in the spring when Charles Dickens stole up Johnson's court to post his first literary effort. It was at 48 Doughty Street that Dickens lived during his early married life when he was writing Pickwick Papers, Oliver Twist and Nicholas Nickleby. The house is now a museum dedicated to the great writer. St Dunstan's chimes played a great part in the story of Trotty Vec. It's mentioned in Mr Pickwick's contribution to Master Humphrey's clock. You'll remember the home of Mrs Bardell in Goswell Street, with her boy Tommy and her friends Mrs Raddle and Mrs Cuppins, that good lady setting out for the Spaniards Inn at Hampstead. And what of the old George Inn at Southwark? Actually, Mr Pickwick found Sam Weller at the White Hart nearby, but as that's entirely changed, we've taken the liberty of giving Sam a temporary job as boots at the George. Wren's Great Cathedral, St Paul's, is often mentioned by Dickens. Close by was Doctors' Commons, where Tony Weller bought a marriage license. Near these steps at London Bridge, Nancy promised to tell the story of Oliver Twist to Mr. Brownlow, but she didn't know that Noah Claypole was in hiding. She has come to keep the appointment. Holborn has changed since Oliver Twist was written, but St. Andrew's Church is much the same as it was in the days of Bill Sykes and Oliver and Fagin. The Cheshire Cheese in Fleet Street was probably the inn where Sidney Carton took Charles Darney after the acquittal of the Old Bailey. One of London's most attractive spots is Fountain Court in the Temple, where Ruth Pinch waited for her brother Tom, or maybe John Westlock. Students of Dickens affirm that the very spirit of the famous novelist lives there today. But truth is even stranger than fiction, as this queer notice board 